Welcome back. Today, I wanted to take a look at some developments surrounding the 787 production and deliveries, and it is not necessarily good news as the title suggests. Moving over to Air New Zealand, and unfortunately, in a similar case to the first story, the problems are continuing there. And then there's some changes at Airbus in North America, with a former airline CEO joining the company. Let's take a look at the headline story. Boeing's ability to maintain healthy production and delivery rates appears to be under fire after new developments have surfaced. In a memo sent by the American plane maker to its employees, it was identified that slower production across the 787 would take place for an extended period of time. However, the manufacturer's inability to meet key production rates will also force it to slow deliveries of new Dreamliners to customers. Boeing cites ongoing shortages of key parts to produce the aircraft as a reason why it's being forced to slow down the output of what is at the end of the day a very popular wide body. It certainly seems like Boeing can't catch a break. And while of course a lot of the problems it is facing are its own doings, in some cases when you've got supply chain shortages there's just not a whole lot you're able to do. Supply chain difficulties that I speak of have hampered the industry since the beginning of the global pandemic in more ways than one, with many manufacturers such as Boeing and even over to Airbus feeling the heat. But the thing is, it's not just been them. There is a subsequent knock-on effect that then hurts your airline customers who are relying on this aircraft. These airlines are the ones that then are unable to acquire the planes that they need on time. This can affect their finances, inability to launch routes, and generally the pushback of retirement for older aircraft, which then has negative effects too. Ultimately, there's no real positive outcome for the manufacturer, company, or just generally the supply chain. Additionally, many would argue that there also seems to be no real end in sight. While some supply chains can improve, others can weigh heavily. Heavy, and in the end, it's never really all that optimal. In a memo seen by Reuters, Boeing said that it was still working on increasing production and delivery levels of its 787. However, when this occurs, well, it remains to be seen, but it will be significantly later and obviously now slower than first imagined as they cope with what's ongoing. It marks Boeing's second aircraft family to experience these slower than expected production rates. We know that following a door blowout incident on the MAX, this popular narrow body has had its output significantly restricted. Yes, the FAA have barred a production increase, and airlines are now adjusting their forecasted delivery intake. But really just examining Boeing, they're unable to meet current production goals because of the audits ongoing into the production of these planes. The 787 Dreamliner, yes, has not been immune to difficulties over the last decade. However, the manufacturer has actually, to their credit, been slowly recovering and rebuilding this program. As a result, the latest delays due to supply chain shortages and the difficulty in obtaining key parts seems to be out of their control, but it still puts them under further pressure. Boeing's 787 is an incredibly popular long-haul wide-body aircraft that is crucial to many airlines' long-term success, and thanks to these latest reports, you'd imagine now airlines will need to readjust their forecast to meet specific long-term growth plans. Over to some changes at Airbus. Robin Hayes, you may know the name, he was the former CEO of JetBlue, is on the move. Just months after leaving the US airline, he's been unveiled as the new CEO of Airbus Americas. Role shift comes following a nine-year tenure as JetBlue's CEO. During this time, Hayes helped reshape the company to where it is today, and he departed JetBlue in February, where he cited health concerns after discussions with doctors and his family. Family. So, interestingly, he is back in the game pretty quickly after leaving JetBlue. Airbus is adjusting its leadership team, and this follows news that the existing chairman and CEO will leave and therefore be replaced by Hayes as of June the 3rd, 2024. As part of the shift from the airline world to manufacturing, Hayes will head the commercial aircraft division across North America. While much of the focus will be on obviously the commercial side, Hayes will also need to ensure smooth integration across the other divisions of the company, 
such as the space, helicopters, and your military aspects. Airbus said that Hayes brings 35 years of global aerospace leadership with him, during which time he worked at obviously high level with several airlines. Additionally, Hayes spent time with IATA on the board where a focus was placed on achieving zero carbon emissions by 2050. He will report to the current CEO of Airbus. With over 2,000 suppliers in more than 40 states across the US, Airbus spends a staggering USD 15 billion annually, and the region is home to more than 10,000 employees across 50 sites. This will be Hayes' responsibility. The immediate reaction to the hiring from analysts and general lock and general onlookers is pretty mixed. Many have indicated that such a decision from Airbus is actually something competitor Boeing should be pretty pleased to see. This is because they look directly at the state JetBlue was left in at Hayes' departure, which has been far from optimal to say the least. At least in this case, Hayes will not necessarily have as much control over what he did when he was in a role at JetBlue. We'll have to see how his position plays out and just what some of the key areas of focus will be for the long term. Over to the final story, and Air New Zealand has had a very trying past year, and this unfortunately is expected to continue. The forecast follows the latest carrier's guidance, which paints, honestly, a pretty bleak picture. At the beginning of the week, Air New Zealand said it was forecasting weaker profitability for the year, which is not the first time it's had to adjust its expectations. The flag carrier says that it will see profitability reduced between NZ 40 to 50 million for the year due to percent consistent economic and operational conditions. This is very vague, so what actually is going on? Well, we've seen increased competition on its North American routes. Companies such as United Airlines have aggressively expanded into the Oceania region in the last 18 months, and what they've done is given your flag carriers of Air New Zealand and even Qantas in Australia a pretty hefty run for their money. However, with other companies enhancing their network to New Zealand, it's meant the flag carrier has felt a lot of pressure. Air New Zealand also says that continued local inflation and subsequent weakened demand have contributed to the problem. Specifically, the airline focuses on travel in the government and business sectors, which has seen drops. As pressures continue to mount, Air New Zealand has been forced to increase the price of its airfares. This has obviously been received negatively, as high levels of inflation mean that people's spending money has gone significantly down over time. It is a pretty difficult time as we know, and therefore with airfares rising, it means for crucial travel, it is setting locals back even more. Air New Zealand, on top of all of this, has been battling many fleet problems. I only discussed some of those just days ago with multiple engine issues, not just impacting the 787 fleet, but even the newly delivered Airbus A321neos. That centering back to the Pratt and Whitney GTF issues that are hurting, again, the narrow body operation right around the world with many different companies. Air New Zealand just so happens to be one that is hurt by several. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap. If you have got any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop it down below in the comments. Thanks a bunch for your support here on the channel. It certainly does mean a lot. Do take care and do also be safe. I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest news recap. And we'll fly.